So, we are talking about the financial system. We already talked about financial intermediaries. Now let's go ahead and talk about financial markets. So, in financial markets, we're going to have borrowers and savers interact more directly. So, without as much presence of a middleman or intermediary. And these are going to fall into a couple of main categories here. We're going to have debt or bond markets. We're going to have equity or stock markets. And we're going to have risk or derivative markets. And we're going to go ahead and leave risk or derivative markets almost entirely out of this course because they're really, really complicated. Um, we can talk about them a little bit at some later date once we start talking about risk and risk aversion and expected losses and so on and so forth, but that is not part of this series of lectures right now. So let's go ahead and think about debt or bond markets. So what is a bond? A bond is a tradable IOU. So essentially a bond is a piece of paper and the paper promises to pay the current holder, whoever holds it at some particular time, various things. It promises to pay them what are called coupons, which are periodic payments over the life of the bond, and it promises to repay the face value, also called the par value, at the maturity of the bond. So maturity there, that's essentially when the bond comes due. And this face value or par value is essentially like the principal on a loan. And the reason why this is relatively advantageous is if you lent money to someone directly or lent money to a company directly and then decided you needed the money that you had lent, you might be out of luck. You might go, well, I can't demand immediate repayment from, my, from the person I lent the money to, so I'm just going to have to wait until the loan comes due. But once we make these loans into tradable IOUs, then I can sell the IOU to another investor. And although I haven't recouped my money from the person who borrowed it, I can go ahead and get my money back that way. And this is what's called a trade in a what's called secondary market. The primary market is when the bond issuer, say Ford, sells bonds, sort of freshly created bonds or newly created bonds to investors. And the secondary market is when investors trade amongst themselves. And the existence of this secondary market means that investors know they have an alternative way to recoup their investment and 
Thus, it decreases the riskiness of what is basically a loan here and makes investors more willing to make this loan than they otherwise would. So that is essentially how bond or debt markets work. We'll go ahead and do some stuff on how to value a bond and the different characteristics of bonds later, but for now that'll be enough. What about stock markets? So stock markets, we're trading ownership. Ownership. Shares. So you talk about shares of stock, and effectively everyone who owns a share of stock is a kind of partner in the company with the amount of their partnership proportional to the number of shares that they own. So what might happen here is, at first, a company might be what's called closely held or privately held. Say it might be owned by one person. Say it's all owned by Mark Zuckerberg. So more realistically, it's a small group of investors who founded the company. maybe some people who sort of got in at the ground floor. And they want to go ahead and cash out some of their investment. Because right now, if you're a founder of the company, most of your wealth is tied up in the welfare of this company, and you want to go ahead and cash out. Or they want to raise money for an investment project. So they've expanded to a certain point, and now they need to be able to expand some more, and they want to raise money uh, to do that. The sort of cash out is probably more likely than raising money for an investment project. But in either way, either situation, they engage in what's called an IPO, an initial public offering, and that is when they sell the stock to the public for the first time. So this is the primary market for stock. And this is a relatively infrequent occurrence that a company has an initial public offering. Sometimes companies will issue additional shares so to raise some money for an investment project. So during the financial crisis, for instance, when banks needed to raise more money, some banks sold additional shares to the public. Um, but that's pretty uncommon. It's pretty exceptional. So that's the primary market for the stock. And then the stock market that you hear reported in the news is the secondary market, where investors are trading shares of stock that have been in circulation for a long time. And again, notice that you know the fact that these things arise in standardized units of, of stock, standardized shares, makes the investment less risky. It means that if I become a partner by buying shares of stock, say at the initial public offering, then I can go ahead and back out of my partnership and cash it in by selling it to the market as a whole, instead of having to sort of shop around town and find some particular individual. So there's an active market in the shares, the ownership shares of the company.